Hi, it's Vita Pacha. I'm Tony. And we're building this 31 foot 8 cruising, potentially ocean going sailboat. Um, she's designed by the, by the boat designer and naval architect Jay Benford. And she's one of a series of these sailing dories that range from, I think, 26 foot up to 37 foot 6, if, I, if I'm correct there. A series of, of sailing dories. I say this is the 31 for 8 version. She's the latest of those designs, designed in 2002. Uh, and this is the video log of the build of this boat. Now, as you may well know, we uh, pulled her out of the shed last week and that's given us a good opportunity to do some, some testing because we've had a fair bit of rain since then. Um, and I'm pleased to report that she's basically dry. Very, very few and very, very little in the way of leaks. A little bit around the main hatch, which is actually not properly finished yet anyhow, <coughs> but I'll certainly address that. Other than that, everything's completely dry, which is great. And before we get into what we've been doing this week, <clears throat> I wanted to, uh, to briefly address something that seems to confuse a few people at least, and that's the subject of the keel. As you may be aware, at the moment we don't have a keel, and clearly a, a sailboat needs a keel, or at least a, an ocean-going sailboat needs a keel, or at least most of them have a keel. Uh, and this boat indeed will have a keel. And I've said it before, I know, but, but one of the beauties of this designer boat is that the keel can be fitted last. You can keep a low in the shop, makes getting up and down a lot easier. You know, you, you know we're six foot high, aren't we there? Um, and at the end of the build, basically, you crane her up, lower her down, fit the keel. So there's a wood, dead wood construction. It's a long keel. I've gone for the shallow draft version. Um, because one of the things we really want to do is go through the French canals and, and the shallow draft is, is about 1 metre 10 or so uh, draft. So, um, you know, makes French canal work entirely possible. Long keel, basically full keel, full keel cut the way four foot and the keel then extends to back to support the back end of the, of the stern hung rudder all the way through and a uh, ballast weight of about uh, 1,300 kilos of lead coming up. So that's something I should be building very soon, you know, this, this autumn, winter, that'll be made. And uh, then we'll truck everything up to the boatyard separately. And uh, we use the crane there to lift her up, lower her down onto the keel. So keel is coming, guys, and she will have one. So we're here in the workshop, there's an aeroplane going overhead. But um, yeah, here in the workshop, and there's quite a lot been going on this week. Um, and one important thing has been the bimini, which is some of the frame. I made a good start on the bimini, various parts constructed. I've got a couple of those stood there. Heavy duty poles, um, stainless 314. Um, 314, 316 stainless uh, poles coming on well. Welding with the welding with the art welder, the stick welder, um, low ampage 
welding really nicely, really pleased with the way the world's coming out. Um, so it's coming along. The design for the Bimini is finalised in my head now, uh, making good progress, waiting for a few more parts, um, probably next week, good chance of actually getting as far as fitting that, I certainly hope so, we'll see, but waiting on a couple of parts, so I say, to push on with the Bimini structure, at least the framework, the idea is to get the framework in, um, I can then drag the tarp over that just for a bit of protection in the cockpit area while I make the actual hard top, which will take a bit longer, of course, but the, the stainless frame is coming on well. Then come to the um, lockers, cupboards in the heads. Um, I had a long, low down locker there and I wanted to put some sliding doors in that. So I bought some of this. I tried decided to try an alternative material. This this material here, it's a it's a pressed laminate. I think it's one of those things where it's paper and epoxy resin basically pressed together. Um, good solid material. Quite difficult to cut. First challenge was to cut it cleanly. And I tried tried the little Bosch hand saw, I tried grinders. In the end, I cut it on the table saw with the blade wound well down and by putting a piece of ply underneath it to support it, run it through the table saw and it came out with a fairly clean cut then. That was the first challenge.
Um, and then you can see from that one, a couple of experimental holes, cut some holes in it. But the hole cutters I had, I had a couple of little teak circles that fit in those holes, but the, the teak, I didn't have a hole cut of the same size as the teak circle. So ended up just turning down the teak on the lathe uh, so it would fit into the hole, cut a hole that I had, glued those in and uh, fitted them. I made up a couple of aluminium rails. I just bought some U-section aluminium rail and glued two of them together with some MS polymer side by side. Screwed those, screwed those in place, top and bottom. And the doors slide as sliding doors do. inside and the eagle-eyed amongst you may well spot that some fiddles have arrived around the seating area 
the fiddles that have really play the role of keeping the, the upholstery, the cushions in place. They're in dug for here, under the nav table that you can't see, there's a little shelf that I've put a, a fiddle under there as well. These match that the fiddles are on the, the shelves at the back of the seats. So they're in, and I've also cut, pull one of these out, also cut these sort of trim pieces, to just sort of cover up, there we go, just cover up that joint between the cabin sole boards and the, and the settees there. Um, cut those out of a bit of sycamore that I had, a tatty old board of sycamore, and I managed to get enough out to do all around in the same wood.
I shall now, the next job with this is to, he says, trying to get it out. Next job is to drill some holes because the intention is to only screw them on so they can be taken off if need be. Drill some holes, count and sink them, and then varnish them all around all sides before actually fitting them. Well laid in, as I say, cut all around the boat and looking very nice, I think. And that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Give us your thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Big thank you to all subscribers, new and old, and to the lovely people who support us on Patreon or via PayPal. We'll be pushing on, trying to get that Bimini steel work finished this week, I think. Uh, hopefully we'll get that done. And uh, we'll be back. See you next time. Bye. Thank you.